example one, we're going to find two positive numbers whose sum is 20 and whose product is large as possible. So again, two positive numbers where they're going to add up to 20 and the product as large as possible. So let's start by going through and highlighting some important stuff. If you don't have a highlighter, you can always underline. We want two positive numbers. So already that tells us that our domain is from zero to infinity, whose sum is 20. Okay, so now our domain ends at 20 because you could do zero and 20. And product is as large as possible. This is a key word right here. This means that we're gonna be optimizing to find a large value or two numbers that will multiply to a large value. So here we go. Step one, understand the problem. Again, we're looking for two numbers that add to 20 and when they're multiplied, create the largest number possible. So what I mean by that is say for example, I had the numbers 15 and five. Well, 15 plus five do add to 20, so they work. And 15 times five is 75. Okay, well, let's see if we can find another pair of numbers that add to 20. Let's try 18 and two. Those add to 20 and they're both positive. So then we get 18 times two is 36. Well, right off the bat, we notice that this number is larger than that number. So this is wrong. Now our question is, is this the biggest product we can make? That's what we're gonna determine. So step two is to draw or model the problem. So I'm gonna start making some variables and here we go. So X will be my first variable. So this is gonna represent my first number. And then Y will be my second variable. And this is going to represent the second number. So it's kind of hard to draw this because unless you want to draw a, li a linear function and a quadratic, it's a little tricky. But we're going to make uh, modeling by equations. So we have x plus y is equal to 20. And we have that x times y is equal to some large number. Again, this is the large number we're trying to maximize. So we don't know what it is yet. Okay, so we have two equations. But the problem is, is we need it in terms of only one equation. So I have x plus y equals 20 and xy equals L. Again, this is the formula that we're gonna work with. So we're gonna use this one to rearrange the variables. I only want one letter in my equation. I only want one variable. So I'm gonna choose that I'm gonna only want x in my equation. So then we need to find a way to get rid of this y. Well over here, we have, over here we have a function that relates x and y. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna subtract x from both sides. And I'm gonna get that y is equal to 20 minus x. Now if I substitute this y into for right here, we're gonna get x times 20 minus x equals some large value. So L is equal to 20x minus x squared. Now we have it in one variable, so we're good to go. What I suggest doing now is to graph the function. So you wanna graph 20x minus x squared. And you're gonna, you can graph it on your calculator or you can do it by hand. So I graphed it and it looks like this right here. So right off the bat, just looking at the graph, I can tell you that the maximum output is right here. So I know when x equals 10, I had the largest output of 100. But we want to determine that algebraically as well. So let's talk about what does x and y represent. x and y represent positive numbers. So x can't be negative and y can't be negative. So we have to exclude then all of these values and all of these values. Because over here, x and y are negative. And over here, y is negative. So you can't have that. So let's talk about our domain. The domain then 
is x such that, well, what numbers is x in between? We're in between 0 and 20. Now my question is, what kind of operator goes in between? Is it less than or less than or equal to? Well, if x equals 0, is 0 positive? And the answer to that is no. 0 is not positive because a positive number is defined as being larger than 0. So it's only strictly in between. And algebraically, this, would be, this is how you would find your domain. You would go y is equal to 20x minus x squared. Set that equal to 0. Factor out an x. And you get x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 20. Okay. Set four, identify endpoints and critical points. So our endpoints are obviously just a piece of the domain. So our endpoints then are x equals zero and x equals 20. The critical points we get by taking the derivative and setting it equal to zero. So we give our function that L is equal to 20x minus x squared. And we're gonna go ahead and take the derivative with respect to x to both sides. This is why it was so important to take uh, the time to get one variable because this way we don't have to deal with implicit differentiation. Don't worry, that is coming in the next section. So in case you really want to do it, you will have your chance. You set that equal to 0, you get 2x equals 20, so x is 10. So now we have our critical values and our endpoints, and now what we need to do is solve our mathematical volumes. So now what we need to do is solve our mathematical model. And what I mean by that is we're going to use our x values to solve for the corresponding y values to determine the max and the mins. This is what we were doing in section 4.1. At x equals 0, we want to solve for the corresponding y value. So we had that y is equal to 20 minus x. So then you get y is equal to 20 minus 0. So y is 20, which is good. That's a big number. Big numbers is what we wanted. However, remember, the large number is x times y. So you get the large number is 0 times 20, and that gives you the L is 0. So that probably is not our answer that our largest number is 0, but let's check the other values. You get x equals 20. y is equal to 20 minus 20. You get y is 0. So the large number is then 20. times 0, and the large number again is 0. Mm, probably not the right answer. Let's try 10. You get y is equal to 20 minus 10, so y is equal to 10. This gives us the ordered pair of 10 comma 10. So L is equal to 10 times 10, and L is equal to 100. That's the biggest value we got. So that tells us that this right here gives us the largest product. And that's good. So now for step six. Whoops. Step six is to analyze and write out our answer. So here's our answer. If x is equal to 10 and y is equal to 10, we need to make sure that works. Well, what was our only restrictions? We're between 0 and 20, and we're both positive. So that checks out. Now to write our answer. The two numbers, because remember, we invented x and y. All we asked for was for two numbers. So the two numbers that have the largest product and a sum of 20 are 10 and 10. And there's your answer, that's how you put it, all nice in a box. Okay, so what I want you to do now is do this try on your own. Find two numbers that add to 50 that have the largest product, very similar just with a different sum. So go ahead right now, pause the video, and try that out. 
Okay, here we go. Let's make sure you got it right. X plus Y equals 50. I'm going to do this a little faster. I'm not going to write out every single step. I'm just going to show you how long it should take doing this problem. So X plus Y equals 50. X and Y are my two numbers. We also know that X times Y has to equal L. X times Y has to give us the largest number. So I know I want to get rid of this Y. So we have Y is equal to 50 minus X. So then we get X times Y equals L. It's going to turn into X times 50 minus X equals L. And just to write that a little nicer, 50X minus X squared equals some large number. Okay. Now what we need to do is we need to determine the domain. And you can graph that if you want. I'm just going to do it by hand. You get that 0 is equal to x times 50 minus x. So we have x equals 0 and x equals 50. So my domain then is x such that x is between 0 and 50. Now what we need to do is we need to find our critical points and endpoints. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the derivative of this in respect to x. And we get that the derivative is 50 minus 2x equals 0. And we get that 50 equals 2x, so x is 25. So now we're going to write everything out. We're going to write our endpoints, which are x equals 0, x equals 50, and our critical points, which is x equals 25. And remember, we have our function y equals 50 minus x. So then we're going to get, if x is equal to 0, 50 minus x. So y equals 50 minus 0, and you get y is equal to 0. And then when you plug that in, I'm sorry, y is equal to 50. Then when you plug that into your large number formula, which is x times y, you're going to get L is 0 times 50, which is 0. It's probably not right. Let's try x is equal to 50. y is equal to 50 minus 50. So you get y is equal to 0. And then so you're going to get L is equal to 50 times 0, which is again 0. Probably not correct. Let's try 25 y is equal to 50 minus 25, y is equal to 25. So you get the large number is 25 times 25, and you get the large number is 625. That's, that's correct, it's the largest number, so it's the max. So then we write our answer. The two numbers with the sum of 50 And the largest product are 25 and 25. And there you go. That's it. You've done an optimization problem with two equations.